Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here and today with a new topic. The topic of today would be, you've seen by the title of the video, would be load curve and load duration curve. So first, let's talk about a load curve. So a load curve is what? Now uh, a load, uh, you know what a load is, right? And you know what a curve is again. So the thing is load curve. In the previous video, we saw a number of examples where we, we drew uh, uh, the, the, the variation of load in a tabular form. We saw that from 8 to 9, we have a particular load, 9 to 10, 10 to 11, 11 to 12, etc, etc. The, these particular things are running at that time and then we calculated the total load at each interval by the sum of all the loads that were present at that time. You saw it, it was boring. It was boring enough, time consuming, not in a presentable form. First, the load is given whatever the appliance is running at that particular time and then you have to sum to find the total load at that time and then you do the summations and this and that. So time consuming and boring for me. For me it is boring. Maybe not for you. But let me show you a simpler method. Let me show you a simple method. So we, we go for a graphical approach. We go for a graphical approach. So load curve is what? It's the graphical representation. It's the graphical representation of what? Of load variation. So we show the load variation on a graph and this is called a load curve, right? Yes, so what have I written over here? Load variations graphically, amount of electricity used, right? Yes, sir. So for instance, for instance, I will divide this load curve. So the load curve would be a power versus time graph. This is time, this would be power. The units could be hour, second, whatever it is. The power units could be kilowatts, megawatts, doesn't matter for me. What do I have? Let's say I divide it in a number of hours. So in the previous video, as we talked about, uh, a, a, a milling uh, a workshop so a workshop was running from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. so let's say I start over here with an hour interval I start here at 9 so then I have 10 then I have 11 then I have 12 13 uh, not 13 or, or let's say in this 12 hours format so 1 2 three and then we have four right so this was nine to four workshop and the load variations were given so let me just randomly draw a load let me just randomly draw a load right yes so this is just a random load curve and and let me give them them some values as well so for instance this is 5 this is 10 this is 15 this is 20 and these units are in kilowatts and the time units are in hours where each is a one hour interval so this is what this is a load curve which means what that during 9 to 10 he is using 5 kilowatt of load 10 to 11 is using 10 kilowatts 11 to 12 he using 15 12 to 2 he using 20 and 2 to 3 again 15 and then 3 to 4 he is using 5 kilowatts of load so the load pattern that previously in the two examples in the two videos we saw was given in a tabular form rows columns summation etc etc we only have one picture and this is a good enough picture so a little presentable form right yes sir from here from here the load curve if the load curve is given what can you directly predict so you can directly say not predict say from this you can say a number of quantities the first would be what the first would be maximum demand Maximum demand would be what? The highest point on the load curve. The peak load, right? From here you could see it's 20 kilowatts. The second that you could say is the off-peak load, which you could say is the minimum load. So the off-peak load or the minimum load in this case is this, 5 megawatts, right? Yes. You can do what? You can say number three, the energy consumed or the energy units. And how can you say that? So from area under the curve. From what? 
from area under the curve and how from area under the curve because this is a rectangular graph power into time would give you the energy power into time so this power into this time this power into this time this power into this time sum all you get the total energy consumed during the interval which you are studying you can find out the average load average load and the average load is what that you can find out by by considering the total units over the total interval of time for which you are considering this load curve you can find out the load factor fld which is the average load the ratio of the average load to the maximum demand or e divided by p into t you have all the values so this is how informative just a single picture is yes yes sir i hope this is clear isn't it it is number of units generated area under the curve you can have the maximum demand under the curve and the next is the load factor right yes now this also shows you the habit this shows you the habit of the consumer how is he using his load where is his mag what is the time where, where his maximum load is lying what his habit is that he is using maximum load at this time his habit is that he is using the least load at this interval so you can state this from the load curve yes sir what do you have uh, a load curve uh, if you are given for instance an example for instance you are given an example is to draw a load curve let me have an example let me have an example and what is this draw a daily load curve from the load data for a group of residential consumers given in the company table and find so i will write it down wait so the first is time and then you have the load in kilowatts the time and then the load is given so 12 to 3 12 to 3 then you have 3 to 6 6 to 9 9 to 12 then 12 to 3 3 to 6 6 to 9 9 to 12 midnight is here this is midnight and, and this one is 12 noon right the loads are 3 9 12 15 3 9 12 15 15 6 18 3 6 18 and 3 the load is given in kilowatts what are we asked to find you are asked to find the draw the daily load curve the daily load curve this is for a single day so you are asked to find the daily load curve what else maximum demand pm average load p energy consumed and the daily load factor fld so these things are unknown so let us have it let us have it okay so uh, okay if for instance this is my vertical axis vertical axis would represent what the power in kilowatts and the horizontal will represent time so it's starting at 12 in the midnight right and then you have a three hour duration so 12 to 3 3 to 6 6 to 9 9 to 12 noon 12 to 3 3 to 6 6 to 9 9 to 12 midnight this is the time in hours now let me draw the load three you have a three megawatts over here for this interval then you have nine nine is let's say over here for this interval you have nine then you have 12 for this interval 15 for the next 15 again 15 then 6 then 18 
from 6 to 9 you have 18 and then 3 from 9 to 12 so I hope that this is in the range of my camera this is in the power is in the kilowatts range if not still you know what I have drawn although it's good enough it's good enough right yes so from here what can I calculate uh, so what can I calculate the daily load curve I've drawn load curve I have drawn this is it next I could say what the maximum demand so the maximum demand is what you can see the maximum point on the load curve that is 18 kilowatts and that is lying where 18 kilowatts that is lying between 6 to 9 p.m. yes yes sir the uh, energy consumed I could say first the energy consumed would be what energy consumed is basically the power into time so you would have to find out each and individual energy unit for this and the and the sum of all the sum of all would be the energy units of the overall day which means the area under the whole curve yes yes sir so please do the multiplication 3 multiply 3 plus 9 multiply 3 plus uh, 12 multiply 3 plus 15 multiply 3 plus 15 multiply 3 again plus 6 multiply 3 plus 18 multiply 3 plus 3 multiply 3 so I could have taken the 3 common and added the others but anyways this was to show you that I am taking each and every block and then summing all of them to find the total energy units consumed in the whole day so you do the calculations for yourself I will write down the answer directly and the answer is 243 so 243 and the unit to this would be kilowatt hour yes yes now the average load the average load p would be this energy divided by the time for which you are considering it so this is a 243 kilowatt hours divided by the number of hours are 24 so the average daily load comes out to be 10.125 kilowatts go i don't like the, the very much decimal places you can go up to a maximum of t i usually neglect it anyways load factor you could find out so the load factor you can find out from the formula that is what uh, uh, p p average load to the maximum demand average load to the maximum demand or you could uh, wait put me values average load is 10.125 divided by the maximum demand is 18 or you can also find it out divided by e divided by pm into t which would be what 200 and 43 divided by 18 into 24 so this is the same thing basically 243 divided by 24 this 10.125 put it here divided by 18 the same the same thing load factor comes out to be 56.25 0.5625 or this would be 56.25 percent 56.25 percent i hope that this is clear I hope that this is clear now the next thing is the next thing that I have is a load duration curve I have what I have a load duration curve so let me do this in this video as well so we will uh, 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 do the examples in the next video let me have load duration curve load duration curve now what is a load duration curve so this is again the same pictorial graphical representation of load variation but this time it is arranged in a particular manner and what is that particular manner that is a descending order so arranged or, or let me write it completely let me write a little properly I would write load variations arranged in descending order 
which means what which means that the maximum demand would come to the leftmost side and then we will go on decreasing as we move towards the right yes yes again this is the same power versus time graph so i have the values 18 is the maximum 15 12 9 6 3 and let this be zero and this is in time which which is in hours so we have got a three hours interval so so for that you only need to you, you do not need to show now this time you do not need to show that this is let's say for instance over here the maximum demand is from six to nine so you do not need to show over here six to nine you have divided into three hours interval just say for the first three hours for instance right yes so how many intervals are there one two three four five six seven and eight so for the next three hour this thing one two three four five six seven and eight so 18 is only for one interval then uh, 15 is for two intervals one and then two then what do you have 18 is done 18 is done 15 is done for two intervals then you have 12 for one interval 12 is done then you have 9 then you have 9 over here then you have 6 and then you have 3 for the two intervals right yes yes sir so this is your load duration curve which shows what that these are arranged in the descending order which means what that the maximum demand is the leftmost right yes and then it goes on decreasing as we move towards the right yes now one thing one thing the other terms the everything would be the same for instance the maximum demand as from the load curve would be the same as the load duration curve the energy consumed would be the same why because the area under the curve for this one and this one both are the same yes yes the average load would be the same because everything is the same we have just changed what we have just played with the presentation of it we've just played with the presentation of it we have the book writes that this is a more presentable form this is a more presentable form the rest of the things are all the same rest of the things are all the same and i will check if i have any other points so i don't think i don't think i don't have i have any other points the load duration curve uh, will give you what can can give you the generation scheduling will help you in find out the generation scheduling and we'll see a video on this the generation scheduling for example you have to do what you have to you have to commit units to it so the three would be almost present for the entire uh, interval the three kilowatts plant that is committed to this system would be pre would be on for almost entire of the time yes yes so which means this would be operating at a higher load factor yes yes then the six kilowatts would be comparatively the load factor would be lower and for the for the highest demand that is 18 that would be operating for the shortest period of time so the load factor would be the least for that right yes we'll see that in the upcoming videos anyways if i write them over here so if i'm committing a plant let's say so a three kilowatt plant if i am committing one plant so what do you have is this would be operating for most of the time for nearly all of the time so the load factor fld would be the highest then if you go upward the six kilowatt plant this would have a relatively low load factor and the load factor would reduce as you go upwards why because their time of operation would time of commitment would reduce so i will write over here the time of commitment for instance time of commitment and i i, I have made the spelling wrong anyways it doesn't matter we are not interested and then as you go to the topmost the 18 kilowatts so if you talk about the 18 kilowatt the maximum load so this would be on the time of commitment would be the least and therefore the load factor fld is the 
least for this case yes yes so i think i finished this video over here uh, before it gets boring right uh, and i don't think we need to do any examples on this but still i will see if i have examples in the book so i will i will just make a shorter video on that okay so uh, i was thinking to get into the next video for examples but uh, but i only had only two examples related to the load curve and the load duration curve so why not just fit it into this video right yes so the first is example 3.10 the time is given in hours the load is given in megawatts and you're asked to find the load curve and some parameters so the load curve would be what would be that would be the load what's his time graph so, so let's say if this is my uh, my load power in and this is in terms of megawatts in the book it's written so let me write uh, so the first six durations you've got uh, what wait let me just make some portions for it 70 50 60 40 right so so let this be 70 60 50 40 and yes let this be zero this is the time and the time is in hours so for the first six hours duration zero to six the the, the load is 40 megawatts then from six to ten it's 50 megawatts 10 to 12 it's 60 12 to 16 it's 50 again and 16 to 20 it's 70 and then uh, 20 to 24 it's 40 so 20 to 24 it's 40 back 40 right and and let me just stay it here so this is the load curve right yes the load curve is what i have given the tabular values i have presented it in a pictorial manner from here now i can calculate the maximum demand what is a load curve we have we have made the load curve we can find the maximum demand would be what it is the maximum load that is occurring and that is occurring over here it is 70 megawatts at what interval 16 to 20 interval right yes the energy units consumed the energy units consumed could be find out by multiplying the power with time that is the area under the curve so 40 multiply 6 40 multiply 6 plus 50 multiply 10 plus 60 multiply 2 plus 4 multiply 50 plus 70 multiply 4 and plus 40 multiply 4 so this implies what the energy units this is example 3.10 so you can do the calculations yourself the energy unit comes out to be 12 into 10 to the power 2 in megawatt hours 1200 1200 megawatt hours why because i've written uh, the energy in the megawatts range so if i write it in kilowatts so this would be 1200 into 10 to the power 3 kilowatt hours or 12 into 10 to the power 5 kilowatt hours as the book has written whatever it is you write it in the kilowatt hours range do the calculations yourself it may be wrong maybe i have done wrong maybe the book has done wrong maybe mistakes are possible anywhere so energy units now the the average load would be what the average load would be the energy units consumed that is 1200 into 10 to the power 3 and this would be divided by the time so this we are considering a single daily load curve so that comes out to be 50,000 kilowatts 50,000 kilowatts so 50,000 kilowatts is the load the load factor would be what average load in kilowatts over the maximum demand in kilowatts the load factor is 
the load factor is what it's 0.714 or in terms of percentage it is 71.4 percent so this is for the for this now load factor is also done from here you could now the load curve is given so you can find out the load duration curve as well so if i find out the load duration curve so i can also have the load duration curve well, this is the power in megawatts 70 60 50 and 40 and this is the time so first is occurring is 70 is the most which is occurring for four hours so for four hours you have got 70 right yes then what do you have you have 60 for two hours so 60 for two hours then you have what 70 is done 60 is done then you have 50 for four hours this and four hours this so 10 hours so you have 10 hours and you have 50 for these 10 hours and then finally you have 40 for four and six 10 hours so 40 so this is your load duration curve yes yes sir so this is the first example the next example is example 3.15 and i believe you would have a shadow over here anyways i would just uh, state that these are the time in hours the load in megawatts again plot the load curve and the load duration curve so let me draw uh, one of them for instance so for instance i draw the load duration curve the power in megawatts and this is for the time in hours so the maximum load is what the maximum load is at 60 the maximum load is over here at 60 which is occurring for four hours 12 to 16 so this is 60 for four hours then you have what you have 50 which is occurring for four hours again let's say this is 50 for four hours again wait Wait, 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 wait. This would be 4 over here. Let this be 4 over here. Fine. Yes. Uh, so 50 is done. 60 is done. Next you have 40 for 4 hours. 4 hours and you have 40. And, and then you have 20 for, for 4 and 4. 4 and 6. Sir. 4 and 6. 10 and 2. 12. So for 12 hours you have got 20 so let this be your load duration curve load duration curve the load curve take it as your homework right you know you can the energy generated per day you can find out so first you can go in the same manner you can find out the maximum demand from here this is what it's 60 megawatts then you have what the energy generated would be what would be 60 multiply 4 plus 50 is occurring for 4 again plus 40 multiply 4 again plus 20 multiply it's 12 for what so 20 multiply 12 i believe so 4 and uh, 4 8 and 8 12 and 12 yes 24 so the energy units find out the energy units but make sure this is in the kilowatt hours range okay we've taken the power in megawatts take a 10 power 3 outside make it in the kilowatt hours range then you can find out also the average load so the average load would be e divided by t let's say this is x so this would be x upon 24 this would give you y for instance and then you can also find out the daily load factor which would be y upon the maximum demand which is 60 into 10 to the power 3 so so find x y and this particular load factor and also draw the load curve by yourself i finish this video over here because i am a little hungry i have to go and have my dinner i will see you in the next video with the topic of diversity factor till then take care goodbye